Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. My name is Lucas Wilson, and today we are getting a hands-on review of the Insta360 Titan 11K. This thing is a literal monster. It looks like something from Star Wars or something. This is not mine. I didn't purchase it. Um, this was actually rented for a client shoot, and I rented it from Lens Rentals, and Lens Rentals being the awesome uh, service that they are, actually delivered it about three days early, and of course I had to jump on that uh, opportunity and make a review video about it. Before I rented it though, I had actually looked on YouTube to see what other people were saying about this 360 camera. And honestly, there was kind of a gap um, on online about this camera, like actual hands-on reviews of this camera. Only just a couple people I could find that had any information about this uh, from a more hands-on perspective. I would guess people probably aren't doing very many reviews because it costs $15,000. <laughs> so not a cheap consumer camera to go pick up and uh, do a review on it. The camera comes with a nice rubber ring that slips on the top real nice and easy and protects the eight 200 degree lenses from getting damaged. And I was also impressed with the build quality. It's made from aluminum alloy instead of what could have been a plastic housing. It uses the rechargeable lithium polymer battery and has a runtime of up to about 70 minutes. Um, I was actually quite impressed with the runtime of this battery. I used it on and off for about half a day and I think there was like still 40 to 50% battery left by the time I was done. So I didn't feel like it was draining quicker than I expected. Obviously, if you do plan to do a lot of heavy shooting, having a second battery on hand doesn't hurt, but let's be real, it's not like you're gonna record 70 minutes of 11K 360 footage. Maybe you are, but I'm pretty sure you're not, and you definitely wouldn't want to because of what it'll do to your computer. It would just smoke your computer, be straight on fire. The battery lives in the center of the camera and you access it by twisting the top off and pulling the battery out. And then the top cap just twists and locks on nice and easily. And it's a little button inside the top handle that releases that cap. So a pretty nice feature and uh, no issues accessing the battery there. So you might be wondering how many memory cards does this take? Does it take just one? No, it takes nine. <laughs> yes, nine SD cards. I think it's basically one SD card per lens or camera. There is one spot where it takes two SD cards on top of each other. Not sure what the ninth card is for, but they all seamlessly work together. And I'll touch a little bit later in the video on the workflow for managing the video files from that and how that works. The screw size on the bottom of the camera is a 3 8 so if you're used to a traditional quarter inch uh, tripod plate, you will wanna get one of these handy dandy little adapters, one of these little guys, and that'll make your life a lot easier. You're welcome. I'll leave a link down below where you can pick up some of these. They're just super helpful to have on hand anyways. I think Insta360 does make heavier tripods, specifically for these heavy 360 cameras, as the Titan does weigh 12 pounds, but I used my newer brand carbon fiber tripod and it works just fine. Once you have the camera fastened to the tripod to power it on, you press and hold the center round button on the display for like two seconds and then it powers on. It takes maybe 10 or 15 seconds for it to actually power on. Um, and then once, once it's on, you can choose your settings and go from there. It does have a pretty loud fan noise, but I don't think it's gonna be much of an issue. If you're doing some talking head to the camera, uh, you're not supposed to stand closer than 3.5 meters anyways because of the stitching issues with all the lenses. If you get too close, it'll make you look a little warped and kind of weird. <laughs> uh, so you just you can't stand that close anyway. So I didn't find the fan noise to be an issue. The menu system I found to be pretty easy to navigate despite the small screen and easy enough to flip through the different settings in the video or photo modes. Once you select the settings you want, it will indicate that it's ready to record, and then you just press the center button again and it starts recording. A neat feature they added to help you know it's recording is they place these little LED lights around the outside of the camera to let you know that it's rolling. Now, everything about this camera is impressive, but one of the big selling points that Insta360 uses for this camera is their Farsight technology. Basically, this is their live monitoring system they have created that allows you to have a ground-to-ground -ground signal range of up to 300 meters and ground-to-air up to 900 meters. I don't know when you'd be doing ground-to-air or what that exactly means, uh, but it sounds cool. But that means with the ground-to-air, you could be almost uh, up to half a mile or 2,700 feet away. To set it up, you attach the Wi-Fi transmitter to the tripod below the 360 camera. Make sure to attach the screw-on antennas to the 360 camera the transmitter, and the receiver. You then take the provided ethernet cable and plug one end into the transmitter and then the other into the bottom of the Titan. You wanna make sure that when you're hooking all of this up that the camera and transmitter and receiver are all off and I'll explain why in just a minute. 
Once everything is plugged in, start by turning on the 360 camera, and then the transmitter, and then the receiver that has your phone. Once everything is turned on, an IP address will show on the screen of the Titan, which you then input into the Insta360 Titan app on your phone, which will then uh, establish the connection to the camera. The reason you have to turn everything on in that order is if the 360 camera is already on when you plug in the ethernet cable from the transmitter, it will not read the IP address. So that's why you wanna make sure everything is plugged in and then you turn it on. That way the IP address will then read correctly on the screen of the Titan. I found this issue out and had to sort of troubleshoot a couple different ways until I figured out that it wouldn't read the IP address until uh, everything was turned off and then turned back on once everything was connected. My thoughts on the Farsight technology are a little bit mixed. Um, I wasn't even able to do any long distance tests because I just couldn't get it to stay connected for more than maybe a minute. I would get it connected and I could see the live preview. I could adjust all my camera settings and hit record and then it would just disconnect and I would have to go through just a process on my phone on the app to get it to reconnect. And it was just an annoying hassle. You don't actually have to use the Farsight technology if you don't want to or if you don't plan to be as far away you can just use the Bluetooth connection as well. Um, as far as less hassle, I liked using the Bluetooth feature and it would still connect maybe a little bit better, but it would still drop the signal and, and drop the connection, which was annoying. So I found I was just not even using any sort of live monitoring. I would just hit record and just trust that the auto features were doing a good job and making everything look good, which I think they did. I was just a little disappointed that it didn't work as smooth as I'd hoped it would. Uh, it's definitely not a deal breaker for me. I think it's a great camera, but I just wish it would have worked a little smoother. So again, you know, maybe I was doing something wrong, but overall, I, you know, mixed emotions on the Farsight technology. Now let's talk about camera quality. That's the one thing we all really want to know about with this camera. And honestly, I was quite impressed. I found the footage to be very clear. Um, I, I thought it held up well in different lighting conditions and it held good clarity. I, I think it, honestly, it, it looks great. Um, you know, it's definitely a step above the more consumer level cameras. You can tell it's a high end professional 360 camera. Basically with it being 11K, you're obviously not viewing, if you're viewing it in a VR experience or using your phone in a 360 experience, you're not viewing the whole thing as 11K, it's cropped in and that's where you lose your quality. So if it says 11K, it means you're gonna be viewing less than that, but it's still gonna be uh, you know, maintaining its clarity. So overall, I was very impressed with the camera quality of this camera. I did try shooting some footage with uh, the Insta360 iLog, which is like their, you know, S-Log or C-Log. It's just their flat profile would be more their cinematic profile in the 10-bit. And um, I think it looks really good. Uh, you know, right out the gate, it definitely has a more color grading, uh, you know, appeal to it as far as what it would handle. But you know, for me, is is it really worth shooting in a in an iLog profile versus like a standard profile? If you're viewing it in a 360 format, uh, I don't know that it really makes much of a difference. I think personally, I would probably find myself shooting in the normal color profile and then adjusting my grade from there. Uh, I think it looks just as good, and and I don't know that there's much of a difference in the end. You know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I think overall, it looked great. When you use the Farsight and Bluetooth capabilities, if you're able to get it to work, <laughs> you can adjust your camera settings like exposure, uh, ISO, white balance, your S curves, the color profile. So it gives you a pretty wide range of controls for your footage, which I think is, is really cool that you can actually adjust those types of settings right there. And it, you know, seemed to work very intuitively and work, work really well if the camera stays connected to the Farsight or Bluetooth, of course. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, with that thing costing $15,000, it kind of freaks me out to set it on a tripod and set it by a railing with water. I feel like it's gonna tip over into the water. It like, has me just a little nervous. I did a low light test, and while there are some street lights here, um, I think it still looks really good. And I know there are some situations where it could be darker, but overall I was impressed with how it held up in the highlights of the lights that were there, and then of course the shadows with it being night. Obviously I would opt to shoot in daylight if I could, uh, but it's nice knowing that if I do need to shoot in some low light conditions, as long as there's other lights around that I think it'll hold up okay for what you need and definitely look a lot better than the lower consumer grade cameras do in the dark. So I give it a good thumbs up for low light quality.
Now, I did do some walking tests with this camera to see how it would uh, function and how the flow state stabilization would handle some movement. Insta360 does offer that this camera can be used for moving shots. It's a huge camera to move. <laughs> so I put it on the end of my Manfrotto uh, monopod and of course I had to hold it above my head to stay out of the shot as much as I could. And then of course just tried to walk as smooth more or less that I could. Overall, I think it looks pretty smooth and definitely looks usable. Not gonna lie. I feel super weird doing this. I feel like Gandalf, like a nerdy Gandalf, just walking around with this thing. I think most people think I'm probably doing like Google Earth Street View, but we'll see how it looks. I don't know, let me know what you think. Is it pretty stabilized? Does it look good walking with it? Obviously if it's 360, you look down, you'll see me walking with it, but I don't know, we'll see. Maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. Would I want to use this camera for moving shots often? No, I don't think so. Uh, partly because of the stitching aspect. It's stitching eight lenses together, so I felt like I could sort of see uh, a little bit more noticeably where those stitching lines were when I was moving versus when I was stationary. But the stabilization definitely looks good and it would work and be usable if you wanted to get some moving shots. The camera does have an onboard mic that is okay. It's just good enough for reference audio. Obviously, if you're doing some talking head, you'll want to have a lav mic or like I said, another miking system, but it's good reference audio if you need it. Here's an example of the audio where it's just my lav mic and then you'll hear the onboard camera mic. All right, we are downtown Hope Sound, trying another location. I'm on the main drag of Bridge Road that goes right through Hope Sound. Uh, but I wanted to get a feel for just movement, sort of activity. I know we're not looking at any sort of far away locations or horizons. And honestly, it didn't sound like trash audio if you needed some just strict ambient audio, if for whatever else you had no other form of recording ambient audio you know at a higher quality real quick if you guys are enjoying this video please give this a like as it does help the algorithm push this video out to more people i appreciate it i'm going to talk briefly on the workflow of managing the video files from this camera but i'm not going to dive in deep as next week i'm going to release a video with a more in-depth review or tutorial on how to manage and stitch together this footage um, kind of more step by step this is just going to be an overview on how it works so it'll answer maybe a few questions you might have to back up and manage these files, you're gonna need a USB hub with at least 10 ports available, and then you're gonna to need to get nine USB card readers. Insert all the SD cards in those readers, plug them into the port, and open the Insta360 Stitcher app. From there, you'll be able to stitch all these files together. Actually, it'll more like, it'll take care of the process for you, stitch everything together um, once you go through the proper steps. Again, there are some more finer details with this process, but I'm gonna save that for a video for next week just to make sure I can explain it clearly as this video is getting a little bit long already, but I wanna make sure you guys know how to do that process, so don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Stay tuned for that video next week. All right, so what are my final thoughts on this camera? Well, this thing is an absolute beast. <laughs> it is a monster of a camera, but it definitely has high quality images. I was impressed with the quality, the clarity, the workflow for something like this could be complicated and overall I didn't find it to be terribly confusing. Obviously there was a learning curve, but that's normal with any new camera. Overall, it's a great camera. Uh, it will definitely deliver the high-end 360 quality for a good VR experience that you would be looking for. And if you're in the market for a 360 camera like this, of this kind of quality, then the Insta360 Titan 11K will definitely not disappoint. This type of camera is not a consumer camera necessarily. It is definitely a high-end professional camera for very expensive shoots or clients that can afford to either rent or purchase a camera like this. If you are looking to buy this camera, I do have an affiliate link with Insta360 down below in the description where you can pick one up and get some free accessories with that purchase, including an extra battery. So definitely check that out if you are wanting to pick this one up. If you're interested in Insta360's other cameras, I will leave some links down below for those as well. Anything you purchase through my links, you will get some free accessories with that camera. And of course, as an affiliate link, I get a kickback from whatever you purchase which will go right back into this channel, helping me make more content for you guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've made it this far. Uh, please hit that subscribe button if you found some value in this video today, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.